Welcome back to Meant to Be Singles Retreat. It's time for our singles to step outside of their comfort zones and onto some unforgettable blind dates. From picnics to painting, these one-on-one -on -one moments might be the key to finding their perfect match. I'm feeling really good, I'm really excited. Not really nervous anymore. I feel like I've kind of warmed up a little bit being outside. Um, I'm, I'm feeling a lot better. I'm looking forward to asking that person questions, getting to know him, feeling his energy in person, just seeing what type of things that we might have in common. I'm just happy to be here. I'm just happy to uh, just be able to experience this opportunity. I'm just thankful for everyone who has been involved, thankful for everyone who is setting this all up. Yeah, I'm feeling great. So far, my day's been pretty good. Um, this is a new experience for me, so I'm excited about it all. At first, I was a little nervous, but I feel like I'm loosening up a little bit because this is my first time doing this, but so far, so good. Hello. I'm Jay, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, I'm Jay. What's your name? I'm Jay. Nice to meet you, no problem. So we're painting? Yes, we are painting. I'm not really a good painter, but... I mean... It should be easy. It's, right? it's outline. Yeah. Yeah? All right, let's see. So here are our cars. All right. <clears throat> you like to go first, ladies first? Sure. <laughs> um, okay. Nice to meet you as well. <laughs> Hi. Hi. You're doing well. How's your day going so far? So far, so good. How about so, yours? It's been a day. It's been a day. It's been a day. <laughs> Are you nervous? Yes. Me <laughs> too. If you could wake up tomorrow having gained any one quality or ability, what would it be? I'll say the ability to, let's say, for example, change things. For example, you know how, um, like, there's things go wrong all the time. Mm -hmm. Let's say a, a hurricane happens. Hey, maybe I could make the hurricane blow the other direction. Um, so I guess I can make the world a better place in that sense. Mm -hmm. What about yourself? If you had, a, if you had a good ability, what would you? Mm, I've always wanted to be good at singing. Okay. That's gonna be my answer. Okay, see, I like that. But how are you? You doing okay? Yeah, this is different for me. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I'm like, when it comes to like love relationships, I'm real private. So like doing this with the opportunity for people to see it happening, like yeah. <laughs> Where are you from? Charleston. Charleston, South Carolina. That's where you currently stay. Yes. Okay. What about you? Houston, Texas. Oh, okay. That's what you're at now. That's where I'm at. Okay. Uh, it'll be three years, three years in December. In the December that I've been there. Okay, so where are you originally? Cleveland, Ohio. My sister lived in Cleveland for a while. Is she? Yeah. She didn't like it, is she? She didn't. I didn't think so. <laughs> the weather. No, yeah, I mean, you know, when you came up in the south and you go up and it's like snow, like first time it's probably cute. Mm -hmm. This is cute. Second time is like, yeah, no, nah, I can't do this. And you gotta learn how to drive in the snow. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a whole thing. In the south, when it snows, we don't go anywhere. We don't at go all. <laughs> Take four minutes and tell your partner your life story in in as much detail as possible. Wow. My life story. Where do I begin? Four minutes tell you my life story. I am from Miami, Florida. Mm -hmm. uh, I am Haitian descent. Okay. I am one out of four siblings, the only son. The other, the other three are women. Okay. Had both parents growing up. Are they still married? My father passed uh, in 2021. So if it wasn't for that, they would be still be married. In 2021? Yes. Okay. So very recently. Grow, say, growing up. Sorry to hear that. Yeah. A lot of people say that, but then at the same time, I'm like, you know, there's a afterlife eternal life right 
you know, like it's right. better to be with the Lord. I hope he fulfilled his purpose. I hope he did. I hope he did. I had a, I had a good relationship with my father. He had a good relationship with my mom. So I pretty much like growing up, it was a really, really great experience because I really didn't know how much they love each other until I would probably say a year before where we took him to a trip and just saw how in love they were because in a Caribbean household, you know, a man tends to be, you know, the strong type, you know, he never show any weakness. And that's the softest I've ever seen my dad in my life. They were walking down the street holding hands. They were kissing each other. And I'm like, mom, dad, like, what are you guys doing? Like, I've never seen that side of them before. So uh, I just thought it was such an amazing thing to see because I've never seen my parents in that light. Wow. Yeah. So after, I guess, high school, I attended FSU. Oh. Um, yes. Okay. Attended FSU. After FSU, I attended NOVA from Southeastern. Mm -hmm. After that, um, I got a job in government, and that's where I've been ever since. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I work for, yeah, I work for the government. Yeah. Crazy. Funny enough. Oh, wow, that is so crazy. Why do you say that? Um, I've kind of always seen myself being, like, really passionate about, like, social work okay. and stuff. Um, I work at a, uh, actually, for the juvenile detention center. Okay. So, yeah, juvenile justice system. Um, and then also, like, in school, um, I've also been just really passionate about government, policies, systematic issues. Right. Like that. Okay. I think we have, like, similar... Do, do you work with all types of age groups, or is it just, like, a certain age group that you work with? Right now I am, but before it started out in youth. Okay. Which I think is so important because they're growing into adults. Okay. All right, ladies first. Okay. Well, Dupree, do you believe in the power of prayer and what role should it play in a relationship? Yes, and it should play a very important role. I think it's something that we should do together. Uh, I think it's something we should, you should, hopefully you're doing it currently because I am. Um, I believe it has the ability to change things and you should always be in communication with God to understand your direction and it's how you also gain wisdom. So we should take everything to him. You? I agree. I agree with that. Power of prayer is very powerful. And like the Bible says, I've said this before, man should always pray. So you should have been already doing it. Too. Definitely. So you do it together. A few times before I walked over here, <laughs> a couple times while I was standing here. If you had dinner with God and he could tell you the truth about yourself, your life, the future, or anything else, what would you want to know? I would definitely want to know if I have been a good servant. Really. Mm. I feel like that's my main thing is to please my father. And um, I can be really hard on myself. Like when I mess up, I have to remind myself who God is and remind myself who I am as a daughter, right. not just, you know, someone serving God and trying to please him. Right. Like I'm, I'm really his child. Right. So yeah. I okay. Answer. Your answer. For me, I wouldn't want to know the future only because we are living life and it is written but we're discovering it. I would more so want to know the past to see why certain things transpired, um, why certain things have gone in the direction they've gone in, because to get a better understanding of why things are the way they are now. Because, for example, um, history in general, when you read your Bible, there's so much gray area as far as like, for example, when you're reading a story, you know, one minute, you know, a person's a child, the next minute they're an adult, they're an adult. So, you know, there's so much that happened in between. So I, I would like to know, like, you know, why certain things happen the way they happen. Because it's through our, it's through our past that, you know, we, we learn to live for the future because we, our lessons are learned in the past. And hopefully we take those lessons and become better in the future. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, because, you know, in the word it says um, history repeats itself. Yes. So, yes, I like what you just said. Um, have you always been the type of person to wonder, like, why? Absolutely. Want to know why? You uh, all the time. I'm all, yeah. All I'm the time. Way, way. All the like, time. Very curious. 
what are your dreams and aspirations? Dreams and aspirations, really, right now, I'm just really comfortable with everything. I'm not really trying to reach any type of ladder corporately or anything like that. I want to be comfortable with my family. Mm-hmm. That's it, really, just live comfortable and with God in the center, because I've been in relationships where he didn't really play a major part. Mm-hmm. It was just surface. So I just want to be comfortable with family, married with my children and my two-year-olds. Okay. And what are the ages? Five and ten. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So that's really it, to just live happy and just go day by day. Like, I'm tired of, like, the worldly stuff now. I'm not mm-hmm. really into it. I just mm-hmm. want to relax and chill and just praise and worship and just be a union. I laugh because... If this was to work out, my daughter would be the center because she's eight. Oh I don't know if I want that. <laughs> House full of women. <laughs> what about you? I just want to do all that I was assigned to do. Okay. There has been a lot of things that I know God wants me to do and will have me do. And it's like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, nah. Like, you want me to do what? Nah. Mm-mm. And then he won't let me sleep or he like disturb me until I do it. So I just want to do all I'm supposed to do. Like my career is cool. Um, I do travel a lot for my job, but I also do a lot for uh, my church. Like right now, I'm currently in the middle of getting ready to uh, we're putting on a men's conference this coming weekend after this weekend. We're also launching our mentoring program uh, that I was key in uh, help creating. So it's a lot that's going on with that. So really my life is like work and ministry. So it's like, and then I'm a father. So I'm a father at a distance. My daughter lives in another state, um, but I'm very present in her life. So that's what's also important to me. But I do have her for like summers. We switch off for like Thanksgiving and Christmas. We'll switch the holidays. I get her spring break and then I always go see her for stuff. If she has anything important going on or whatever, I'm always there. That's good. That's good. Yeah. I don't know why. I feel like yours look a thousand times better than mine. I feel like you're staying within the lines. No, I'm not. <laughs> like, I'm like, mm-hmm. this, this. I like this that you did blue. I did red. Right. But no, I'm not, I'm not really like a painter. It is like really relaxing though. I will say that. Creativity wise, what do you usually do? What's your go-to? I don't know. I'm very open-minded. Okay. Like, I've been trying new things. I okay. Like, um, Besides singing, because I know you want to sing. I wish I, yeah, I wish God really gave me a voice. Like, I still sing. I act like I can, but it's not <laughs> like, you know. So are you the one in the shower every morning? Sing your, sing your I definitely away? sing every day. Okay. Like, That's awesome. And no one will really know but me. But, okay. Yeah. Are you shy about singing? In front of no. You? Okay. I, I wouldn't do it like now i want to do it like if i don't know you probably not okay i like to work out i like to be outside with nature um oh, that's awesome i like to i really like to spend time by myself okay um go to the bookstore do you get overwhelmed by large crowds at times in the past i did but do i no, not really. What about you? For me, <laughs> I pick and choose. Mm-hmm. Um, introvert, extrovert. When to be an introvert, when to be an extrovert. But what I would say, my natural self, I'm naturally an introvert. I like to call myself an introvert, an extrovert. But every now and then, while I'm being extrovert, I have to bring myself back. Mm-hmm. I have to like step away. Remember how in the Bible when Jesus would, you know, whenever he'd be around large crowds, mm-hmm. and he would every now and then mm-hmm. have to go back mm-hmm. and um, yeah. find himself. Mm-hmm. I'm exactly that same way because eventually I gets to a point where okay, it's time to go. Same. I I I I, I don't want to yeah. be there. It's time and to I go. I need to re- reevaluate myself too and who I'm around and. Right. It's, it's so Cause easy. it's constantly changing, especially in large groups. Yeah. It's so easy to get distracted too, or like become you know like the world if you if you allow it right i feel like that's why it's so important to spend time alone right and um yeah 
to get to know yourself first mm -hmm. before pouring your energy out into other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. What do you think are the roles of men and women in marriages? Do you believe in traditional gender roles, Dupree? No. I think my belief is teamwork makes a dream work. Um, I have not ever had a woman who like consistently cooked for me. Uh -huh. My ex-wife didn't really cook like that. I was the cook. Okay. So it's one of those things like by me working, when I'm not traveling, I work from home. So I have the ability, like if I'm home, I can wash clothes. I can, you know, go grocery shopping, take care of a lot of stuff. Like I know how to manage a household. So it's, if I have to do that, those things, like if she works in a traditional setting, maybe she has to go to an office or something along those lines, like certain things could be taken care of and it doesn't have to be worried. So it's just whatever works out best for us is what I would believe in. Not necessarily like, oh, you're supposed to do this because you may not know how or you may not like it. And if it's a strength of mind, then, you know. Good answer. <laughs> so what about you? I agree with your answer 100%. Like, I feel like there shouldn't be really main roles or whatever. Like, if it's convenient for you to be there to cook and the kids, you know, are home and I'm not there, I'm working, then you can go ahead and start that up. Or if I am present and you want to do, you know, cook or something, I'll wash the dishes for you, babe. That's fine. <laughs> or I'll cook, babe. You got me with the dishes and we can do it together. I'm big on that. And I, I'm a, it's a teamwork to me. I like to just, you know, be on the same accord and communicate. And if there is anything particular that, you know, we both need to just strictly do, then we'll talk about that and discuss that. Right. So how important is communication to a relationship? Would you describe yourself as an honest and direct person? Very important. Communication is, no, communication is not important. Effective communication is important. Okay. Um, because people can communicate all the time. We communicate non-verbally. That's the majority of the communication. But also with that communication, there needs to be understanding. So that's what I consider effective communication. I don't like to argue. I don't like to argue. I don't need you yelling, screaming, cussing, calling me out of my name. I don't need any of that. Like there is nothing we can't just sit and discuss in a calm setting. Now I understand you may get passionate about something if you feel a certain way, but it's like I don't I don't like to argue. You know what I mean? Like for me, I am I always feel like for my woman, I'm a protector. So how can I as your protector scream on you? You know, like I don't, and look at my stature, like I'm 6'3", 300 pounds. Like that's not, it's not a, a thing, right? So um, effective communication is important. And I'm very honest. Like I want to be upfront and honest with you. One, I desire to have a relationship where I don't ever have to hide anything. Like I want us to know everything. I don't want there to ever be anything that someone can tell you about me right. that you don't know, unless it's like something deep in my past, like I forgot about. But as in current life, as in when we've been together, I don't want anyone to ever be able to come to you and be like, oh, you know he, and you're like, yeah, I know. Like, I'd rather that, because I don't ever want to take away your ability to make a choice if you want to be with me or not. Right. So that's, communication is definitely very important. And I'm honest and direct, because there may be something that I am that you may not, you can't rock with, right? I'd much rather get that out in the open and then we determine like, look, it may not be a good fit. Uh -huh. So, smile sounds on it. You? Yeah, I'm big on communication. Um, I am big on honesty and being direct. Like, you wouldn't really have to ask me, well, what's wrong, what's on your mind? I will tell you. You wouldn't have to ask. Oh, you gonna know. You gonna know, and not even in a bad way or whatever. Right. I'm, I'm good with expressing how I feel because I feel like that's important. I don't believe that you should be able to read my mind and just know, or anybody. You know, I want to be direct with people, and I expect that honesty and direct back because I feel like that just kind of cancel out any confusion. Right. I don't want any confusion, so let's communicate about this. Let's talk about it, and you know, I don't like to argue either. I like the resolution, and I like to get to the point. Like if I ask a question. It is because I actually want to know, like, the answer. You know, some people ask questions just so they can respond and talk. Right. That's not me. I'm a good listener. I want to take it in and find out what the issue is and we can resolve it. You say you like to work out in your um, mm -hmm. downtime. Mm -hmm. um, are you, like, a gym? Or do you, do you like, um, yeah. cross-country, running? I want to. I, I do. I want to. For which one? Both. I don't know. Okay. Like, I like going to the gym. Anything to improve myself, like 
mentally, spiritually, like when it comes uh-huh. to spiritually, like going to conferences, um, going to boot camps, like whatever I can do to be just around other believers and uh-huh. be able to pour into me and right. give me wisdom um, spiritually, uh, mentally, reading, you know, learning, um, financially, like really just like maximizing my opportunities right if i can and uh physically same thing working out eating healthier whatever that may look like i feel like for me every season is uh has been different like i've had a lot of changes in the past two years okay um so i feel like i'm constantly like reaching new heights okay and um I don't know. Have you ever taken the like personality test or whatever, like the Enneagram test? I have. So I would be uh, prone to falling into the overachiever category, right. like Enneagram three. Right. And I I relate to that because I'm constantly like wanting to work, and I do find a lot of satisfaction in that. Okay. Okay. Like yeah. What about you? Do you remember your type? Honestly, I don't. Only because I don't like to put myself in a box. Yeah, for sure. Um, because and I wouldn't put you in that either. When I, whenever I do one of those tests, a lot of times I don't agree with them because I feel like I have several sides to myself, mm-hmm. and I allow myself. Mm-hmm for which side, when which side to come out. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, because naturally, like I said, I'm an introvert, but I know when to become, when to be that other person. For example, if I'm in a large room, I know my role as far as, you know, you can't be quiet in a large room. But if you have to speak up, you have to speak up. You, you can't mm-hmm. be shy in the back of the room, you know, pretending, or if you have something to say, you know, you can't be shy by it because you won't ever get your voice across. So I know when to, to, to show different sides of me and then went to a pullback. So would you say that you know how to be like a leader in the room? Like, and and I know that can look different for everyone. Right. Like, you know, a leader could look like just being a servant. A leader could look like taking charge. The way I would answer that is from my personal experience, people that are around me, coworkers, friends, family, I tend to be a leader. In, in this different aspects, they tend to look at me to lead, whether we're at an event, whether we're doing something to plan. Um, it's, it's, it tends to be one of my strong suits. Mm. Um, even though, believe it or not, like I said, I'm an introvert, but um, I have different sides of me that show different qualities. When, and whenever I need those qualities to come out, um, they, they're pretty much I'm called upon by my, either my friends or family or really- coworkers. Would you say you're reliable? I'm gonna answer. I'm gonna answer it again. According to my friends, I am. <laughs> if you catch a flat tire, you can call me. Mm-hmm. Break down the side of the road. Um, you need help. Uh, I tend to be like to, to the so much so to the point where sometimes I'm too reliable because when you are very reliable, people tend to take advantage of mm-hmm. you. And I've had people who've done that in the past because they know I'm someone they can rely upon. And sometimes I can see it. I won't say anything. If it happens again, I'll mention it. If it happens a third time, then we have a problem. So for most people, that's a little too many chances. But I like to give people, offer people the opportunity to try to be better. Because, uh, you know, things happen. <laughs> but, you know, taking advantage of someone is never the best, the best route to, to go with anything. So. Yeah. yeah, see, yours looks so much better than mine. I should have chose red. So, how would you like your partner to view you in a relationship? Honest. I said that because that's what my daughter says to me. My 10 year old, she said, she's very honest. I was like, describe me. She's the first thing she said, very honest. <laughs> so, honest and prudent. Like, my wife, she thinks ahead. Like, let me ask my wife, like, if. 
something, you know, I got to mm, see about this. Let me ask her because she's going to be honest. She's going to be direct, mm -hmm. but caring. I'm very nurturing too. Like she's very nurturing. She's loving and caring. And, you know, I, I'm emotional intelligent. And that lovely word, emotional intelligence. But, no, I laughed because that was the answer to one of my questions. Oh, <laughs> I feel like that's important. And I think everybody have their different um, views on what emotional intelligence is. Mm -hmm. Like for me, emotional intelligence could be me saying, babe, I got a doctor's appointment today. I don't know. It's kind of, you know, I'm worried about it a little bit and this and that and the third. And then the day comes and. You show up and I'm like, well, what are you doing? You said you had a doctor's appointment and I just wanted to be there to support you. That's a form of emotional intelligence. That's a standard. Like if it's something serious, if you're not like, hey, it's my regular whatever, True. then yeah. Spot. But I feel like in certain men, it's just like, okay, well, I'm gonna go ahead and make this money and, you know, just call me on the way there or something <laughs> like that. But I look at that and even if you're saying that is normal, but to me, that's a big thing. Like that's, Thank you. That's emotionally intelligent. And I just love that. Um, that's just me, man. You're going to, that's what you would see in me. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. You? I would like to be viewed as a protector, a safe space, not just physically, but emotionally. And also like best friend. Like, talk to me like you would talk to your girls, but don't call me girl. Like, you know okay. what I mean? But, like, you know, if you unfiltered, be unfiltered with me. Like, let's let's get it out. Let's get it all in the open, you know, just and have fun with it. Like, some people take things too serious. I like crack jokes. I'm the type of person I'll find laughter in issues and problems. You know what I mean? Like, we'll deal with the issue and the problem, but at the same time, like, we're going to find a reason to smile. That's good. Because that almost falls into how I communicate as well. Like, let's say we're in the same place and something, you know, is going on. But you and I could kind of communicate and, you know, mm -hmm. and we'll go back and we'll discuss it because we both kind of peep. Like, I like that. Too. Yeah, the Lord ain't done with me. Yeah, I'm still a thug. <laughs> just, just put that out there. I was working on all of us every day. Ain't nobody perfect. Just put it out there. Like, I got jokes. Like, hey, hey. Well, that's my next question. <laughs> Are you someone who likes to have fun and joke around? Yes. <laughs> yes, of course. Because, like, first off, as people say, at this big old age, I'm coming up on, I'm probably at the second half of life, right? Okay. Um, if you get in a sense to know, like, my story, my upbringing and everything else and then see where I am now, like, that in itself is a celebration because I'm not supposed to be here. So with that and then even just looking at what I've experienced in the last five years, it's like, man, you did what? It's like, but I made it through it and life is still great for me. Like, I live a dope life. I get to experience things and it's like I always tell stories. and I'm like, this is my life. I can't make this up. Right. So it was like, why not? I'm not great at celebrating myself, but I am great at celebrating others. Like if you got something going on, I'm probably going to be more hyped than you are. So it was like, I'm trying to work on just having fun with life, period. Like just having fun. And so I love to joke. I love to laugh. I love like being silly because in my career, it could be kind of serious. You know what I mean? Some people take ministry way too serious but way too serious but at the same time like the lord's work needs to be done and certain things have to be handled in a certain fashion and so it's like why not with all the heaviness of life like why not have fun and make it light like enjoy yourself and that's what i really want to do my daughter is silly and i'm silly right along with her so it's like i can't i realize like sometimes you could steal away your child's joy if she calls me and she wants to be silly and she want to make faces and noises and stuff like that. And I had a hard day at work and I look at her like, okay, mm. she like, she could feel defeated. Yeah. But when she called me and she do that, and I'm making faces right with her and being silly right with her. Like that gives her energy. So it was like that few moments, you know, it's like be silly. And then I actually start feeling better. So I want to enjoy life. Sit. That's good. Is that your color? Your go-to color? No. No. What's your favorite color? Blue. That's so much. Uh, <laughs> mine's pink. Pink. Okay. What made you consider the show? 
Um, hmm. I think I was just being open-minded about it. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to submit an application. Who knows? Might get selected, might not. And that was kind of like, I didn't really think too much about it, but I was like, it may be an opportunity to, you know, have Christian fellowship, meet other people. Right. Who knows what I can learn about myself. Right. Um, and that was really it. Okay. So similar to me, um, again, this is something I would never in a million years do. I mean, never in a million years. But um, I was, uh, I had a conversation with some of my friends and my siblings. And I realized, I was like, well, um, can't keep doing the same thing over and over again. Um, pretty much just this definition of insanity. So try something different. And here I am. So I'm like, okay, I'll try something different. Because if you know who I am, yeah. Like I said, I'm always behind the camera, never in front of it. Never in front of it. This is my first experience doing anything like this. Like, like I said, like we were saying earlier, adventurous. Yeah, this is very adventurous for me. Even though like I'm a super outdoorsy person who so, like, you know, do all types of things, but I get it. Yeah. I don't yeah. really like being like center of attention and you know, I've never really been like that. Just like what you said earlier, I've always been very reserved and to myself. Okay. But I'm also very like I can be really loud and goofy. I like to laugh, okay. I like to have fun. But it's I have to like really know you or feel comfortable to bring that side out of me. Okay. Show that side or whatever. I'm cracking up. Why? So why? You choose green and yellow. That is so funny. So I was trying to do a like a sunset effect. Um, but it kind of didn't work out. So I was like, you know what, I'm gonna stick with it. Are you like a super pink fan? Like everything pink? No. No? Okay. No. Okay. Mm. <laughs> My whole house could be like black. It could be white. Wow. It could be like it could be any other color, but like as like my phone is pink. Um, I like pink outfits, but like not like overly obsessive. <laughs> so believe it or not, I went through a phase, a blue phase. Oh really? I literally, my dad for my for one of my birthdays, I think my fourteenth birthday. He was like, "What do you want to do?" I don't know why I said I wanted to paint my room blue. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah, I probably did do that when I was young. So, so blue walls, blue towel, blue accent colors. Oh, wow. Okay. And in hindsight, as an adult, I'm like, man, my room is so dark. <laughs> it was so dark. Mm -hmm. I was like, I don't know what I was thinking. But, yeah, I went through a phase where literally my closet was all blue. All blue. <laughs> and okay, yeah. as a man now, I'm like, yeah. But you were 14. So. Right, right. I didn't know any better. So overall, what do you think about this whole experience? So far, I think it's a pretty good experience. Um, a lot of twists, and especially like yesterday with the, the, the recording, I was like, whoa. Yeah, what did you We didn't see that. Um, did not expect that. Uh, I felt like I wasn't ready. Weird. Yeah, I'm sure you did. <laughs> um, that was funny, though. Yeah. And I'm not even sure who did it right because we'll have like side commentary and yeah, we're yeah. joking around and yeah. So, I mean, we had a good time, but um, so far I like it. I'm thank God it's like it's not like um, other shows I've seen. Mind you, I haven't seen much, but I've seen like clips here and there. But so far I like it. What are your top priorities in life and in what order? God, of course, like. He ain't done with me yet, but he's done a good work in me. So he is number one. My children, my family, I'm very family oriented. Mm -hmm. And my peace, that's that's taught too, my peace. I, I have to have um, my peace and time for myself. Mm -hmm. And everything else that falls under, because I can't really save my career, my job. Like I told you, like I I look at my career as it is. Like I know how to do work-life balance really well. <laughs> when I'm there, I'm there, but when I'm off, I'm off. Don't call me. You know, having my peace, love, joy, my family, God, I'm good. Okay.
Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm living the abundant life myself. Okay. That's good. I got a question. You said your last wife. Yes. Okay, you've been married. I've been married one time. Um, we lasted, we were married probably before separation about a little over six years. Um, once I requested a divorce, she left and took my daughter and moved to another state five days later. But, you know, at this point in time, we co-parent well. It's about our daughter. You know, we both want to see her have the best life possible. Um, again, as I said, I'm very involved and very present in my daughter's life, um, but I'm not bitter. You know, I took the lessons. Uh, I've, I actually started therapy two months before requesting a divorce, and I'm still in therapy. Um, so that's something that's important to me as well, because I do see the benefits of it. And so even going through everything that I went through with my ex, I always said that I still wanted to be a husband. And so that's kind of my thing. I still believe that I'm somebody's husband. Okay. So if you don't mind me asking, like, you know, what was like one of the reasons of the separation after six years? Felt like you played like a major part or it was just... Sometimes two people can't get to a point of resolution on certain matters. and if someone is trying to fix it and another one doesn't either think it's an issue or doesn't want to fix it, then that becomes very difficult. And sometimes you reach a threshold to where you kind of feel like defeated. You know, it's like you feel this defeat in this, you, you're trying everything you can to make it work. And then, you know, you praying about it and you like nothing is changing and you start to like, just get to this point of like, okay, maybe it should be over because I never wanted to go that route. Um, but I felt like I've done everything that I can. And so therefore I'm at peace. Okay. So what about you? Ever been married? Yes. Okay. Yes. How long? It wasn't very long. Okay. <laughs> it wasn't very long, but everything was kind of quick in the beginning, you know, but I learned a lot. And the major thing that I got out of that divorce, what I thought was the worst thing that ever could happen to me was actually one of the best things that's ever happened to me, to be honest with you. I found more of myself, God, and everything just really started prospering from mm -hmm. after the divorce, which is strange for me. But um, I love love at the end of the day. I love love, but yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you said you like to have fun, mm -hmm. joke around, laugh. Mm -hmm. What would you say brings out your inner child? Um, what does it look like? Mm -hmm. Mm. I don't know. I just get like these like weird bursts of energy and then people are like, you know, cuz I'm like really quiet and kind of just observer. Mm -hmm. But then I'll just get a burst of energy and like want to hug everyone and love on everyone like I don't know. Probably like when I can just be like free thinking, maybe, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. For me, my inner child, I would say uh, certain meals my mother, I guess, used to make mm -hmm. as a child. That makes me giddy in the heartbeat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, wow. That makes me giddy in the heartbeat. So, so I, I'm a foodie. I love food. Uh, I mean, I look like it, but I heard. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I love to try new things um, at least once. Mm -hmm. um, do, do you enjoy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's your to-go meal? You have one. Mm, that's hard. My to-go meal. You want me to go first? Sure. So believe it or not, because I'm a foodie, I don't have a to-go meal. But because I like to try everything, I have a to-go to go desserts. Okay. What's Strawberry that? cheesecake. I yeah, I like cheesecake. And red velvet. Okay. Those two things I can have all day long. Now I don't because I have to have self-control, you know, health, fitness, all that, whatever. But those two desserts, amazing. Okay, I'm stealing your answer. <laughs> okay. Do you, do you like go to the food trucks and stuff? Yeah. You do? I mean, okay. not like a lot, but I love to um, go out to eat, try different foods. Right. Um, I just like to be out. Like, 
doing something. But you say you're also a homebody. No? It all depends? Yeah. I do like taking naps. I'll say that. I do like that. A good nap is, yeah. is, is always. But then after my it. nap, I'm ready to go. Go? Yeah. 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 Do you want to stay in Florida? I don't mind to stay in Florida. Probably not Miami. Mm, um, would you move in Florida if you could? I like Orlando. I like North Broward area. Um, I don't mind Tampa. Okay. Um, what about you? Are you in Florida? Yes, I am. And I plan on moving to Tampa. Okay. I'm also like, Orlando is an option as well. My home church is in, it was in Gainesville. Um, but wait, Gainesville? Gainesville. Did you go to US? I was no. Okay. Yeah, I was living in Gainesville. I moved okay. back to Polk and now um, okay. my plans are to move to Tampa. Okay. Okay. So are you married to South Carolina? I'm not married to South Carolina. Um but it it is my home. Mm -hmm. I lived um in Raleigh, North Carolina when I was in state college. Are you married to Texas? I'm not married to anywhere. I didn't even think that I would be in Texas. What I do know is I am supposed to be there now. Right. So, yeah, that's kind of one of those things. Like, I'm not married to it. Um, I want to stay in a southern climate. I don't think I want to I agree. go back to the snow. Um, but it, it truly would have to make sense, and it would have to be a move that God is to like, that. hey, you need to make this move. And it's yeah. like, okay. So. June asked me about the joking around part. Okay, tell me. I tell like to joke around. around. I like the trip. Like I like. <laughs> I tell like to laugh. Joking around. I like to laugh. I tell little jokes. Do you? I got tough skin, so I can take them. <laughs> can you really? Because no. some people say they could take jokes, and then they really can't. I really can take the joke. Like I don't want you mad and going to sit in the corner or something. Like you crack a joke on me, and then I give it back, and then you like, ain't hey, like it, and then you in the corner. That's not me. That's and if I you. do that and you laugh, I'm probably gonna laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I will laugh at you. <laughs> like, oh, uh. yeah, I like to crack joke and have fun. So, what's a what's a day in the life like for you? Day in the life. Well, is it a weekend or is it the weekday? Give me both. Okay, weekday, Monday. Get up early, probably like around five o'clock. That's early to me, mm -hmm. and get the kids ready for school. Both of the girls are in school, get them up, get them ready, pray, I, and get them on the bus. Then I get back in the house, and I have two hours available for God. Mm -hmm. I pray, I read, and then I clock in. So I work from home. Okay. I clock in at work, 10 hours. Go do my lunch. Kids are at school. I'm there and, you know, doing other little things probably around the house too, washing clothes and this and that and the third. Mm -hmm. Get off from work. The kids are already home by the time I get off. I have meals prepared and ready and everything. Discuss school. After that, probably might step out for a little minute to take the girls out sometimes or sometimes we stay in. It just depends. And then go over to meet some of my family members, my sister, whatever. We're very close. Like I mm -hmm. said, I'm very family oriented. So hang out with my sister or they come there and whatever else is, happens at night. That's just kind of like an everyday thing. Got you. Yeah. So what are weekends like in Charleston? Cause that's like a college town, right? That's USC. USC. Yeah. Downtown Charleston. It's nice. Uh, weekends for me. I like brunch. <laughs> Women love brunch. <laughs> I like brunch. I'll do probably. I want a pineapple mimosa. <laughs> I do brunch, honestly, and after that, relax a little bit. Pickleball. Pickleball? I play pickleball. I love pickleball. <laughs> I never played pickleball. And a lot of men don't, but it's so. I'll have nothing against it, honestly. I probably just you never know, took the time to. Yeah, try. it's so fun, and I know your girl would like it because my girls love pickleball. So we got pickleball outfits. We got the pickleball get up, and I'm now starting. Got the to pickleball tennis. outfit. We got it all. We got it all. Yeah. <laughs> I'm starting in tennis too, and um, and then sometimes at night hit um, a nice little lounge okay. with my um, sister or something like that. That's really, really good. 
<laughs> it was nice meeting you. It was a pleasure. I'm feeling really good. The date went really well. He seems like a really nice guy. I definitely feel we are compatible. We have a lot of common interests and I really do appreciate how vulnerable he was. I think a couple things stood out to me on the date. We have a lot in common, uh, personality wise, the way that we view the world, the way that we communicate. I would be open to a date in the future and I hope that he feels the same. It was nice. She's a very attractive woman. Um, so that's a plus. We seem to have some commonality there. It's always good when someone provides answers that you would say. So I could tell we kind of think a lot alike in some ways, but um, no, it was definitely a good date. Didn't get any painting done, but definitely learned a lot. My thoughts on the date that I just had, it actually made me feel more comfortable about this experience made me warm up. We weren't able to paint because we were kind of like asking and talking about our questions and stuff like that. And I feel like he was being truthful and being honest. And so was I. Um, it was very comfortable with speaking to him. I feel like in ways we are compatible in certain areas. He mentioned that he had a daughter and I have two girls. So she falls right in the middle of where my girls are. So that's really good. And as far as his communication, we both agree on communication styles. So I think uh, we can go on some more dates to get to know each other a little bit better, get more personable. And this is my first time and I'm just kind of going with the flow. I'm excited about seeing what's ahead of us next. And it's just an overall pretty good experience. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed this episode of Meant to Be. Catch up on all the Meant to Be episodes and we'll be back in two weeks with episode five. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, like, comment, and share with a friend. And also apply for our next season. We are casting for singles looking for their godly spouse. Click the link in the description for more.